The Anai begins with a boy falling from the sky, his name is Yuki. When he awakens, he meets an elf named Kakuro, who claims to be his guide sent by the great lady MF. Yuki has no memory, so Kakuro will be in charge of protecting him and helping him get used to the continent of Astria. Suddenly, two wolves appear and she says that he must defeat them to begin to regain his powers, but the wolves easily defeat Yuki and he faints. After that, Kakuro explains to him that in this world, there are humans, elves, beasts, demons, and various other races and takes him to the capital city, Landersol. There, she teaches him how to use money since he has no normal memories or knowledge. At night, they camp in the forest surrounding the city, but the wolves return for Yuki and almost take him away. The next day, Kakuro wants to sell some of her ornaments to get money to sleep in an inn, but Yuki suggests in broken words that they should get a job. They both go to the guild association to ask for quests and Karen, the manager of the place, recommends a simple quest for beginners. They must collect mushrooms from the outskirts of the city. Kakuro and Yuki go to the forest and she shows him the places where he will get more mushrooms and they separate. She finds several mushrooms and a talking mushroom that was hiding from some crows, and she puts it in her bag to protect it. On the other hand, Yuki finds a girl fainted from hunger. So Kakuro gives her food and mushrooms to satisfy the girl and Kakuro, give her a nickname, Pecorine, she is a sweet, gluttonous, and clueless girl. Since on her way to Landosol, some ruffians tricked her and stole her sword without her realized. Suddenly, while they were eating, some giant mushrooms are summoned by someone mysterious and begin to attack them. Pecorine is very good at fighting, but it is not enough, Yuki and Kakuro are easily defeated, and suddenly, a memory passes through Yuki's head, he remembers a fight where he defended a girl. That seems to activate his powers, a golden light begins to come out of him and reaches the girls, and they begin to feel that their power increases thanks to him. Kakuro says that this proves that he is the Princess Knight. After that, they easily defeat the monster mushrooms which turn back into normal mushrooms, and it turns out that the little talking mushroom that Kakuro had saved was a mushroom that wanted to feed on her. But since Pecorine was hungry after the fight, she eats it and faints. Yuki carries Pecorine on his back and together with Kakuro, they take the mushrooms to the guild association and he tells her that from now on, he will count on her, this makes Kakuro happy because it is the first time he has said a complete sentence since he woke up. The next day, Yuki wakes up early and starts practicing with the sword, which touches Kakuro. While they are having breakfast at the inn, a guy tells them that the best way to get more money and a house is to form a guild and join the guild association. Later. They go to town and see a bunch of people admiring the winner of the eating contest, Pecorine. She thanks them for bringing her to town last night and tells them that she's feeling better, but she quickly runs away when she sees the two guys who stole her sword. So Yuki and Kakuro go after her without realizing that they are being watched by a cat girl, she is Carol. They arrive at the outskirts of the city and face a monster boar that wanted to attack the city, but Pecorine quickly defeats it with her fist, thanks to the power that her Tyra gives her. But accidentally, the boar hits Carol, who is spying on them. When she wakes up, she realizes that she is being taken care of by them and leaves the place angrily, grumbling that her target cured her and took care of her to wake her up. Carol keeps thinking about those three and doesn't understand why Pecorine calls herself like that when that isn't her real name, and she wonders why she doesn't carry her sword. Then she sees some guys with a sword that looks familiar to her. But unfortunately for those two, they are caught by a dragon. And Carol plans to take advantage of that situation. Meanwhile, Pecorine, Kakuro, and Yuki continue looking for the guys with Pecorine's sword, and Carol approaches them and tells them that a dragon took those guys and the sword. Carol takes them to the dragon's nest, where it keeps all of its treasures and they see that it has Pecorine's sword in its mouth. Carol says that she does not want to face the dragon and is going to hide somewhere else. Then Yuki, with Kakuro's protective magic surrounding him, allows himself to be bitten by the dragon, so that it opens its mouth and Pecorine can take the sword out of it. But it was all a trap by Carol, she uses her powers and begins to control the dragon, it begins to fly and Yuki and Pecorine must defeat it in the air. Unfortunately, it turns out well. But when the dragon comes out of Carol's spell, it prepares to attack her and Pecorine intervenes and with her sword, eliminates the dragon once and for all. In the end, Pecorine also saves the guys who stole her sword and they thank her before running away. Then the four of them sit down to eat rice balls made by Kakuro and Pecorine says that she was traveling alone for a long time and now she wants to form a guild called Gourmet Guild. Kakuro and Yuki quickly accept, but Carol refuses and leaves. Days later, Carol sets out to follow Pecorine to discover her weakness. But Pecorine just wants to eat all day, she even makes friends with the guys who stole her sword, so she also eats with them. Meanwhile, Kakuro goes to the guild association and asks for the form to register their new guild. But A doesn't fill it out yet because she wants to wait for Carol. 
Later, she meets Yuki, and they go to the restaurant where Pecorine is having lunch, and they see that Carol is spying on her, so they invite her to eat with them. Unfortunately, Pecorine ate all the food in the place, but she says that she knows that the restaurant has a secret menu. To Carol's surprise, the secret menu is food made from bugs, and although she fervently refuses to eat them, Pecorine manages to get a bite into her mouth and Carol agrees that it is delicious. After the meal, Kakuro tells them that she already has the forms to form a guild, Pecorine is happy but Carol repeats that she does not want to join a guild and leaves. She feels conflicted because she has to eliminate Pecorine, but instead, she enjoys eating with her. But her thoughts are interrupted by a mysterious woman who tells her that this piece is boring. The next day, Pecorine tells Kakuro and Yuki that she is going to work as a part-time waitress at the restaurant and Kakuro feels a little sad because apparently forming a guild is a very distant idea now. Pecorine as a waitress is very attentive and loving with customers, so she has a great time working there. Meanwhile, Carol receives new orders from her leader, she tells her that she no longer has to eliminate Pecorine, she just has to follow her. So she goes to the restaurant where Pecorine works but before she can say anything, a big guy walks into the restaurant and causes a commotion saying that the food is horrible even though he hasn't tried it yet. The chef tries to defend his food but the big guy hurts his hand and Pecorine says that he's probably in a bad mood because he's hungry and starts cooking herself. This big guy turns out to be a food critic, who is bribed by the competition to give this restaurant a low rating. But Pecorine's food is perfect and Carol adds lemon juice to complete the dish. The food critic can't believe that food made from insects tastes like angel food and tries to resist but can't help but praise the food. But since he was bribed, he throws the food on the floor and wants to give him a low score. Unfortunately for him, Pecorine hates those who waste food so with a single punch, she throws him out of the restaurant. After that, Carol tells them that she is going to join their guild and Pecorine is the happiest of the four, she says that the objective of their guild will be to investigate and seeks out for every type of cuisine and ingredients in this world, and above all, enjoy eating meals together. Unfortunately, the guild association gives the gourmet guild an abandoned house full of bugs and snakes, so they must clean out to live there. They clean non-stop for hours until Pecorine realizes that they don't have a table to eat together, Carol says they just have to buy one in town. But Pecorine wants a special table, and is willing to make one herself, so she goes to the forest to choose a good tree for the table. After that, Kakuro goes to the city to buy things for the house and leaves Carol in charge of cleaning with Yuki. Kakuro goes to the city bazaar and is interested in some pretty dishes, but her budget is tight, although the owner of the bazaar, Saren, tells her that she will give her a discount. Saren is the manager of the Serenia Orphanage, and has a maid named Suzu, who is assigned to help Kakuro carry everything she buys from the bazaar. On the way home, Kakuro and Suzu talk about their respective employers and the relationship they have with them, and they talk so much that they get lost in the forest. Then, Suzu gets scared and runs without thinking, releasing the reins of the donkey that was pulling the cart, so the donkey leaves and they don't know how to move the cart. Fortunately, Kakuro sees an animal and catches it to push the cart, but it's not just any animal. It's a chatty alpaca dress in the latest fashion. She is a beast folk named Lima, who works on a farm nearby and offers to push the cart since she is very strong. Meanwhile, at the house Yuki and Carol continue cleaning, but Yuki falls from two chairs when he was trying to clean the higher windows and faints. Yuki wakes up in another dimension where Lady MF lives, she says that she has been watching him and asks him to be careful and help the girls in his guild, especially Carol who is in a complicated situation. Before sending him back to reality, she tells him that the bonds he forms with the girls will help him grow, and when the time comes, she will help him, just like she did in the past. When Yuki wakes up, Carol is glad that he is alive, and he remembers Lady Ameth's words. At that moment, Pecorine shows them the table she made, and they are delighted, but is too big, and they can't get it through the door. Meanwhile, Lima and the girls are very close to the house, but they are attacked by road robbers and they try to catch Lima, but she is very strong and defeats them easily. After that, she runs out of energy and eats him a tarmer apple and takes human form. In the afternoon, Pecorine finishes the smaller table and Yuki and Carol finish cleaning. Just at that moment, Kakuro arrives with everything she bought from the bazaar and is delighted with the house, since it is a real home. At night, they eat meat stew made by Pecorine and praise her because she's a good cook, since this time she didn't use bugs. Days later, Yuki catches a cold and the girls try to cure it in different ways. Kakuro makes a special medicine, but Carol scolds her because she puts bugs in the preparations, while Pecorine cooks nutritious oatmeal for him, but she also puts bugs in it, so Carol says they should take him to a hospital, since his fever is rising. They take them to the city hospital, although it seems like a strange place, and the doctor Mitsuki. And the nurse are dressed extravagantly, Carol distrusts them, but Pecorine tells her that she should not judge others by what they wear, 
But things become even stranger when the doctor takes off Yuki's clothes and says that he must be operated on immediately. The girls stand worried outside the operating room and everything gets worse when they hear heartbreaking screams. Suddenly, a skinny guy bumps into them and they are surprised to realize that he is the food critic, but now he is skinny. He tries to escape saying that this is a prison, but a demon girl beats him and takes him back to his room. When Yuki's operation is over, the doctor tells the girls that he cannot receive visitors, so they go to the restaurant where Pecorine works to ease their sorrows with food. Meanwhile, the demon girl leaves the hospital, her name is Eriko and she is looking for her soulmate, according to her, her soulmate is Yuki, because once he gave her a rice ball when she needed it the most, but she doesn't even know that he is in the hospital. While she is walking around, she is drawn to a temporal fortune teller named Shinobu, and according to her and the spirit of her father, Eriko will soon find her soulmate. Eriko goes to the suburbs of the city and steals a bag of jewels and money from all the thieves, excited at the prospect of finding her soulmate. When she returns to the hospital, she hears the labored breathing of a patient and goes in to check him out and she gets a big surprise when she sees the boy that she has been looking for so much. She ties him to a chair and assigns herself to be his personal nurse to take care of him. The next day, everyone who is stolen by Eriko goes to complain to the hospital, but they are attacked by the Mitsuki and her nurses. They are the Twilight Caravan Guild. Dr. Mitsuki says that they are all very hurt, so they agree to be taken inside the hospital to be treated by her, since she wants to experiment with new treatments and medications on them. Kakuro, Pecorine, and Carol saw everything that happened and devised a plan to save Yuki. First, Kakuro creates a distraction with smoke to get Eriko out of the way, while Pecorine and Carol get him out of the window of his room, but they are almost discovered, so Carol stays and pretends to be a patient. Finally, Yuki is in the arms of Pecorine and Kakuro, they immediately take him to another doctor because they are afraid of what they may have done to him. But the doctor tells them that he has already had surgery and Yuki is cured. They talk to him about Dr. Mitsuki. And the old doctor tells them that she is a good doctor, just a little eccentric. Carol returns home from the hospital and refuses to remember the traumatic experience she just experienced. The next day, Pecorine tells the others that she has the perfect quest for them. Harvesting raw spices, but Carol doesn't want physical jobs, so she refuses to go, although Pecorine convinces her by giving her crying puppy eyes. Then they leave for the distant village where they have to harvest the spices. The road is full of laughter and fun, so in the afternoon they make a stop to look for food and camp. Unfortunately, Carol cannot catch fish, and Kakuro tells her not to worry, she will cook wild vegetable soup with frog meat, which were caught by Yuki. Just thinking about it, Carol almost vomits. Fortunately, Pecorine arrived with a pile of birds, ready to be roasted along with steamed vegetables, and the result is exquisite. Although Pecorine also brought wild fruits, which have the effect of making those who eat them drunk, so Kakuro prefers not to eat them and take care of her three drunk friends. At dawn, Pecorine is unaffected by the hangover. While Carol has a headache, suddenly a beast appears and kidnaps Yuki. The beast takes him to the depths of the forest and he is saved by an elf archer named Aoi. She has no friends and since she is very shy, she only talks to animals and plants. She gets happy because she wants Yuki to be her first friend. But Yuki's three girls arrive and Oe is shy again and tells them that she can take them to the Tarvum village, where they have to do their quest. Finally, the gourmet guild arrives at the Harvest Village and the manager tells them that there is a lot of work to do and not enough workers, so she thanks them for coming. She tells them that another guild is also working there, the Elizabeth Park Guild. Kakuro is happy to hear that and says that her friend Loima is part of that guild. Meanwhile, elsewhere, the Elizabeth Park Guild is resting after a long day of work, and suddenly, dark shadows just like them appear. They start to fight, but the shadows are very strong, and on top of that, a blonde woman named Christina appears and attacks them. Meanwhile, in the village, the gourmet guild meets Hatsune, a sleepy girl who will show them the work they have to do. She tells them that her sister Shiren is part of the Elizabeth Park Guild, and without knowing it, at that moment her sister is being attacked by a shadow that makes her disappear. As Shiren sinks into darkness, the gourmet guild is ready to harvest raw spices. But they are interrupted because Lima has just arrived badly injured with two of the girls from her guild. They tell them that they were attacked by shadow things that were just like them, and by a blonde swordswoman. While Kakuro heals Lima's wounds, Hatsune rests her forehead on Lima to read her mind and discovers that Shiren has been and immediately forms a rescue team. Lima, Kakuro, and Yuki want to go and Oe offers too while Carol remains taciturn because she thinks she knows who the blonde swordswoman is. Meanwhile, in Landrasil Castle, a cat woman sitting on the throne absorbs the duplicate shadows coming from the forest. Back in the forest, the rescue group goes to where the attack occurred and Hatsune flies to the top using her superpowers to get better view, but she is attacked by a familiar arrow. Hatsune falls to the ground and Shiren approaches her in a threatening way, 
but she's not the same as before. Her hair and eyes are now red and her bow is made of dark magic. When she shoots an arrow at her, the explosion is so big that Hakusen loses sight of Shiren and doesn't understand why her sister would attack her. Meanwhile in the village, Carol is worried because she knows that Christina and the shadows are behind everything. At that moment, Pecorine tries to cheer her up and they are interrupted by a bunch of shadows that begin to attack the village. The rescue group hears the screams of the village and runs back to help them but are stopped by Christina, who begins to attack them savagely with her sword, she attacks Yuki, and he faints. Yuki wakes up in his subconscious and Lady MF tells him that he has to awaken his princess Mike power, only he can use it, and he has a memory of faceless girls who were part of his team. When Yuki wakes up, the girls have no more strength to fight, so he activates his princess Mike power and a golden light surrounds the girls who regain energy again and begin to attack Christina with everything they have. Finally, Yuki tries to finish her off in a sword duel, but Christina is very strong and decides to spare their lives since the fight was a lot of fun for her. Before leaving, Christina tells them that Shiren was swallowed by a shadow. They must wake her up. Meanwhile, in the village, Pecorine fights alone against the shadows and Shiren, until Carol decides to join her and starts casting spells, attacks, and the shadows. Luckily, Hatsune arrives and stops Shiren by joining their foreheads and enters her sister's subconscious and wakes her up. Shiren couldn't wake up because she was swimming in negative thoughts, but with Hatsune's help, she trusts in herself and defeats the shadow housed inside her. The shadow leaves Shiren's body and is destroyed by Carol and Pecorine. Finally, the Gourmet Guild completes their first harvest quest, and as time goes by, they completed many more quests, while Carol continued to report everything that Pecorine did, but now the Queen has also asked her to observe Yuki. After completing another quest to take care of a rice plantation, the Gourmet Guild goes to the Guild Association to look for another quest, and Yuki is interested in a pamphlet handwritten with children's crayons asking for an instructor. Karen tells them that this is not an official quest, but some little girls keep sticking that pamphlet on the quest board. They leave the Guild and meet three little girls who are happy to see that Yuki has their pamphlet in his hands and tell them that they are looking for an instructor to teach them what a real Guild does. The three of them are a little lyrical and they want to form a guild in the future to protect the peace of Landosol, and the Gourmet Guild agrees to be their instructors. At night, they prepare everything to train the three girls, starting with the treasure hunt. The next day, they give them a map to look for a treasure and bring it to them. Yuki will be in charge of taking care of them along the way, but the girls are a little worried and follow them through the forest. And they were right to worry, because the little girls don't know how to read the compass and when they ask Yuki, he makes them go the wrong way, things get complicated, when they come across many spiders and spider webs, so the little girls fight them like they were monsters. While Kakatro, Pecorine, and Carol signal to Yuki to turn around and go the right way. But Yuki takes the wrong path again and Pecorine decides to put on her monster costume to scare them away to the right path, but the little girls are not afraid and attack her with her childish attacks and surprisingly defeat her. During the day, the little ones and Yuki encounter various monsters and Carol and Kakaro have to defeat them secretly. When they stop to eat, Pecorine warns the girls that they should not go near a monster bird's nest, but it is too late, the winged monster has kidnapped Yuki. The little ones go to the nest and try to rescue him, but they are defeated by the giant bird and they faint. Fortunately for them, the other girls arrive and confront the monster, although they are a little tired because they were fighting with monsters all day, so Pecorine eats some of the camp food and regains her energy and defeats the huge bird. The little girls wake up and think that they defeated the monster, and the others tell them that they did and congratulate them for finishing their quest, and they lie to them that the treasure is one of the eggs from that nest. But when the little girls take it, the egg breaks and a huge chick is born that falls in love with the little ones. And days later, Kakuro goes to the city to try her luck in the lottery. Since she has four tickets, and good luck smiles on her on her fourth try, she wins the first prize. When Carol returns home after a long day of work at the rice plantation, she is surprised to see so many beach things in the house. Pecorine tells her about the good news and says that tomorrow they will go to the beach. At night, Kakaro shows her swimsuit to Yuki and he gives her a thumbs up. Since he still doesn't speak, then Kakaro shows him a book that she bought to learn how to swim and the two start practicing. The next day, they go to the beach and have the best time of their lives until Pecorine gets tired of playing in the water so much and tells them that without her armor, she is like any ordinary girl. Since her armor protects her from everything, it gives her strength and energy, but it also makes her very hungry, and that's why she eats all the time. Carol tells her that she shouldn't divulge that information so freely, but Pecorine says that they are friends and she trusts them. Suddenly, Suzum appears with her donkey pulling the cart and tells them that Saren opened a restaurant on the beach, and they are going to eat there. 
The food is exquisite, so Pecorine doesn't understand why they don't have more customers and Saren says that there is another beach restaurant that is very popular. Saren takes them to see the competition, and they understand why the other place is more popular, since they sell tayakas. The owner is Akino, a childhood friend of Saren. When Akino sees them, she reiterates her offer to Saren, she wants her to close her restaurant and work for her, but Saren does not want to. Carol doesn't like Akino's arrogance, so she tells Saren that the Gourmet Guild will help her create a new menu, although Saren explains that Akino is a good girl with many aspirations, but Carol is still willing to help her. While the Gourmet Guild searches for new marine ingredients to create an extravagant menu, on the other side of the beach, there is trouble. One of Akino's workers, named Yukari, gets drunk because she is tired of seeing so many couples on the beach, so her friend Tamaki takes her to a remote part of the beach and throws her into the sea so that she can sober up. Unfortunately, that part of the beach was restricted because it is the territory of a giant grumpy squid. It catches Yukari and tries to take her to the bottom of the sea, but thanks to the quick action of Pecorine and Carol, the squid lets her go and Saren defeats it with her sword. So they have the idea of making a menu based on squid, and it is a complete success. At the end of summer vacation, Saren thanks Akino for inviting her to work with her, and she knows she only did it because she was worried about her. Meanwhile, Carol casts a spell on Kakuro, Yuki, and Pecorine so that they can swim in the sea without worrying about lack of air, and they swim to the bottom enjoying the marine view, and at the end, the four join hands and Kakuro silently thanks them for being with her. Ten days later back home, Pecorine goes to the city to buy groceries while Yuki and Kakuro go to give souvenirs to the owner of the restaurant where Pecorine works and Carol decides to stay at home. When Yuki and Kakuro arrive at the restaurant, the owner keeps repeating the word pudding and maniacally cooks quantities of it. At that moment, Shinobu, a fortune teller, enters the restaurant because she heard rumors about what was happening and Yuki points to a place where there is no one. But Shinobu says that there is a ghost. And indeed, there is a ghost named Miyako, who is obsessed with pudding and has been encouraging the restaurant's cook to only cook pudding. After carrying many bottles of pudding, Miyako is ready to leave with Shinobu. Then Shinobu asks Yuki to help her since he can see ghosts and takes them to the haunted castle where her guild lives. At the castle, she tells him that they want to complete the resurrection of her queen, the legendary vampire, and Kakuro suggests leaving but some bats stop them. And they are taken to speak with Ilya Ornstein who reigns darkness. She is scary, but when she comes out of the coffin she lives sealed in. Her power evaporates and she transforms into a tiny girl. She approaches Yuki and says that she doesn't feel it. He has much power. Suddenly, the bats start attacking tiny Ilya since they don't respect her and Yuki saves her from them and inadvertently activates his golden power and that increases Ilya's power. Then she returns to her adult form and punishes the rebellious bats by saying that she will conquer the world, but her power runs out again, and she is tiny Ilya again. After that, Kakuro tells Yuki that it is time to leave, but the ghost Miyako does not allow it because he knocked over the basket of pudding that she loves so much and curses him. When Kakuro and Yuki return home, Carol is scared to see a ghost attached to Yuki's body. Kakuro explains that to free him from it, they have to cook all the pudding that he ruined. Meanwhile, Pecorine continues shopping for groceries and runs into her friends, but they are interrupted by her mother Yasuko. She owns a grocery store and Pecorine offers to help her. Pecorine tells the lady that she traveled everywhere gathering experiences as her parents wanted, and when the lady sees her tire, she tells her that it is good that she has returned home. On the other hand, at home Miyako is desperate because everyone is useless at cooking and the pudding seems like poison. Although Kakuro tries to explain to her that Pecorine will arrive soon, she is an expert cook because she learned to cook throughout her trip. In the afternoon, Pecorine says goodbye to the vendors and returns home, and to her surprise, Kakuro, Yuki, and Carol are transformed into pudding because they couldn't make a decent pudding for Miyako, so Pecorine quickly starts cooking. When the pudding is ready, Miyako feels the angels singing around her because it is very delicious and turns the three puddings into people again, then Shinobu says that Miyako will finally rest in peace. But Pecorine points out that the pudding is delicious thanks to the saliva of the beetles she brought from the market. Miyako immediately vomits and passes out from disgust, so Shinobu carries the fainted ghost away. Days later, Carol is late for breakfast because she wants to continue sleeping a little longer. But Pecorine worries because she thinks she fell and is passed out without them knowing. So she enters through the window, breaking everything that even breaks Carol's favorite stuffed animal. So Kakuro offers to sue it but she needs the necessary materials and Yuki and Pecorine accompany her to the city and buy them. The city market is so big that they separate to look for what they need. Although Kakuro worries about Yuki, since he still has no memories and does not have much knowledge of things, but he gives her a thumbs up and the three separate. 
Unfortunately, Yuki is attacked by a shadow, and when the shadow is about to swallow him, he is saved by an angelic-looking girl, Shiruzu, who claims to be his older sister. She doesn't recognize her because he has no memory of her, but she is happy to see him after so long, but they are interrupted by a red-haired girl, who takes Shiruzu away from there. She is Reno and she is his younger sister. She scolds Shiruzu because they are only supposed to watch her brother from the sidelines, but now that Shiruzu broke that rule, she also wants to go talk to him. But this time is Shiruzu who makes her see reason and tells her that they should not break the rules again. And the two continue defeating shadows that appear in the city and report it to their master. Meanwhile, Carol finishes fixing the window that Pekarine broke and goes to see her queen to give her the report about Pekarine and Yuki, and on the way she picks up flowers for her. Upon arriving at the palace, her queen shows her increasingly frightening shadows that wither her flowers when they pass by her, and the queen orders her to throw that filth away. On the other hand, in the city, Kakuro pampers Yuki too much, so she's warned by an angry Reno not to get so close to her brother, and she is stopped by Shiruzu, who apologizes for Reno's rudeness. But while that was happening, it seems that someone kidnaps Yuki. After searching everywhere for him, the girls decide to put a missing person pamphlet on the guild board, but Karen tells them that Yuki was there earlier. Suddenly, Yuki enters the guild association with a rainbow silkworm, and to the girl's surprise, he coherently tells them what happened to him. It turns out that he saw Eriko, the demon girl, obsessed with him and hid in an alley after he saw a pamphlet for a quest and decided to go look for that material, because it is necessary to fix Carol's stuffed animal. Shizuru and Reno secretly observe them and realize that their brother has not changed, he still wants to help people without caring about his well-being. At the end of the day, Carol returns home distressed by the shadows she saw in the palace and is sad to see the house empty, but that doesn't last long, the others also come home with the sewn stuffed animal and that makes Carol happy. Days later, Pecorine explains to them that today's breakfast is minimal because there is a monster blocking the bridge that connects the city with the others, so the city cannot provide itself with vibes. Then she decided to take the quest to destroy the monster on the bridge, but Carol says that the necessary experience ranking is too high, but Pecorine convinces them anyway. The plan is simple but dangerous. Carol must lure the monster to the outskirts of the city as she does it, then Pecorine quickly defeats it with the power of her sword. After that, the inhabitants of Lambosol thank them for unlocking the bridge and saving them from that monster and Pecorine and not be happier. Then they go to eat sweets at a creep stand and the sellers are Shizuru and Reno, and their master Labarista, so Yuki's two sisters try to hide. Although he doesn't remember them, they still invite them free creeps and Pecorine takes advantage and eats hundreds of them. In the afternoon, Labarista goes to check a village where all its inhabitants have disappeared and the culprit is a new shadow with a mask. At night, Yuki has nightmares of some defeated girls, but he cannot see their faces. Lady Emeth wakes him up in his subconscious and explains that what he dreamed about, it is his past and future. But she has faith in him to get out of this. The next day, Yuki wakes up and asks Pecorine to train him with the sword, since he now remembers that he used to be a swordsman, and that's why he practiced with the sword all this time. After hard training, they go to eat at a restaurant to regain energy, and they hear two customers comment on Princess Yustiana's beauty, but also complain that she doesn't care about Landosol. That piques Kakaro's curiosity and she wonders how the princess is, while Pecorine eats unnaturally quietly. Suddenly, the masked shadow begins to attack the city of Landosol. Without mercy and the people do not understand why the royal knights are not defending them, and Pecorine appears and says that she will protect them and asks Carol for help, but she hesitates. The shadow evolves into a more powerful and intimidating monster and blows up the city walls and Carol is trapped under the rubble, but she is not hurt badly because Pecorine used her body as a shield. Then the monster begins to whip Pecorine fiercely, who does not think to move until Carol comes out of the rubble, but the monster's attacks are becoming more and more painful, so Pecorine takes off a shoulder pad from her armor and gives it to Carol, that will protect her. Once this is done, Pecorine runs towards the monster without fear and with the sword in her hand she launches a powerful attack that does not destroy the monster and leaves her almost without energy. Carol gets desperate to reach her and tells her crying that he shouldn't have helped her. Suddenly, Kakuro and Yuki arrive at the battle, and he immediately activates his golden power to regenerate Pecorine's energy, but memories of his nightmare distract him and his head begins to throb with memories and he faints. Luckily, Labarista appears and saves them all, creating shields and locking the shadow monster in another. When Yuki wakes up, she says that the others are safe. Kakura wakes up in a castle and the first thing she sees is a portrait of the royal family, the king, the queen, and Pecorine. Pecorine goes to meet Kakuro and says that they are in Lambasol Castle, but no one lives there anymore and confesses that she is Usiana von Estrella, the princess of Landosol. 
Pecorine tells her that when she grew up, her parents sent her to travel around the continent of Australia to meet the people she would soon rule and gave her a tire on the day she began her journey. But months later, she returned to the castle and no one recognized her, not even her parents, and not only that, a catwoman was impersonating her and almost eliminated her, but Pecorine managed to escape from her. After that, she met them and began her adventure with them and Kakaro. Understands why she was always so affectionate with them, and hugged them all the time. Then, Kakaro hugs her and tells her that she doesn't care if she is Princess Yushiana or Pecorine, the bonds they forged are forever and Pecorine breaks down in tears. All this is observed by Carol, who feels guilty about everything that is happening, when suddenly, she runs into the monstrous shadow. Meanwhile, Labarista tells Yuki that she is not the enemy, and tells him that the place where they are was built by her. Yuki takes a better look at the destroyed place, and a memory crackles in his mind, and he asks for Lady Ameth. Labarista says that Ameth is intending to return his memories little by little since they don't know if his memory was erased because of Uri. Dive and she shows him that his power is his to save his friends, but it can also destroy him so he must use it carefully. She also tells him that the shadows have absorbed entire villages in search of powerful souls and will continue to appear as long as he is in this world. Meanwhile, in Landosol, the citizens search among the rubble for their heroine Pecorine, until the royal guard arrives and push them aside and the captain of the royal guard arrives and does not understand what is happening. Suddenly, Christina arrives too and mocks the events and ironically says that it is strange that in a nation ruled by humans, only the princess is a beast and she retreats, leaving everyone stunned. On the other hand, Carol faces the shadow monster alone and cries because she was always loyal to her queen, but she accidentally became friends with Pecorine and her tears hurt her more than disobeying her queen, so she decides to surrender to the monster. But Pecorine arrives in time and tells her to defeat the monster together, but it is too strong for them. Meanwhile, Yuki tells Labarista that he will protect his friends and she smiles at him and helps him awaken his power once again, and transports him to the site of the battle. Yuki surrounds himself with his golden power, and confronts the shadow monster while the girls recover their energy thanks to his golden power. Then the four of them together attack the shadow monster and Yuki gives it the final blow with his sword and the shadow monster is finally defeated. Then, Labarista transports them to the restaurant where Pecorine works and all the citizens to jump to welcome them and cheer them since they were very worried about them, which fills Pecorine's heart with joy, who hugs Carol and tells her that he loves her so much, and she this time, Carol hugs her back. The days pass and the Gourmet Guild continues their adventures, living like the family they are. Season 2 Days later, Kakaro brings mushrooms to Carol and she thanks her and gives her a map that leads to a legendary seasoning. Carol doesn't want to go, but Pecorine reminds her that the goal of the Gourmet Guild is to seek out all the delicious foods in the world. The four begin their trip following the directions on the map, it is a long road, so they stop to ask a farmer if he recognizes something on the map, but he does not, and warns them to be careful, because the area is full of monsters. The Gourmet Guild soon gets lost along the way and ends up in a beautiful coral forest where there are flying fish. The days go by and Carol breaks down from the stress of just eating fish for days, so Pecorine and Yuki, go to look for meat for her. Unfortunately, they only find wolves that want to eat Yuki, but they run away when Pecorine tries to hunt them down to eat them. That gives Pecorine the idea to use Yuki as bait to attract predators, and her plan works and she manages to hunt a colorful, hairy monster with no eyes. After that, they cook the meat and Carol feels like new after eating, but suddenly, a herd of these monsters corners them while they were eating and they can't defend themselves because they start vomiting, it turns out that the meat of these monsters is poisonous. Suddenly, an old man appears and saves them all and gives them an antidote tea made from corals to drink, this heals them quickly, and asks them what they are doing in the coral forest. They show them the map and say that they are looking for a legendary seasoning called Drops of the Sea, and the old man explains that they are tears shed by the island turtle when it lays eggs, the minerals that seep out from the mountains on the island turtle's shell, and the deep sea waters create a harmony that is simply exquisite. He shows them the place where the original map is, but they are immediately attacked by three monster ghosts and Kakaro realizes that they are the old man's former guildmates and their spirits are trapped in the coral forest. Sanyuki gives his power to Kakaro and she releases the souls of those three and the old man thanks her and says goodbye to them. He was living all these years in the coral forest because he didn't want to leave the spirits of his guildmates alone even though they were turned into monsters. The old man's soul is ready to leave with them but Pecorine says that he can still have adventures as a ghost, but he decides to leave with his guildmates and leaves Pecorina Lockup with a photo of the four of them when they were young so that they can accompany them on their next adventures. After that, they take a plane made of leaves and travel the last path indicated on the map, 
But when they arrive at Turtle Island, they wait several days for the turtle to lay eggs, but unfortunately, it is a male, and the trip was useless. Days later, the Gourmet Guild brings Karen Rainbow's silk thread after a very difficult quest. The next day, Pecorine and Kakaro are in charge of washing the clothes, while Yuki goes to deliver the silk thread with Karen to the city's seamstress, but Carol goes to a secret meeting. She goes to her cat queen's castle, and reports to her about Yuki and Pecorine. She insists that there have been no changes since her last report, but her queen knows that she is lying since she controlled the shadow monster, so she knows that she joined Pecorine in the last battle. Carol gets scared and starts begging for her forgiveness, and her queen forgives her. Later, Pecorine and Kakaro go to Landosol, and their friends thank Pecorine once again for saving the city, since they now live in peace. Alone, Pecorine asks Kakaro to keep her secret a little longer. She herself wants to tell Yuki and Carol that her real name is Princess Yushiyama, but she will do it later. After that, the two go to the tailor's shop where Yuki went to deliver the rainbow silk thread and are surprised to see Yuki being used as a mannequin by the seamstress, Sumuji, and she tells them that thanks to him, her ideas have come true and the dresses she is making for the concert will be beautiful. At that moment, the idol guild named Karmana enters the tailor shop. They sing, dance, and fight and are delighted with the new costume that Yuki is wearing. When Carol arrives at the tailor shop, she is surprised to see her guildmates wearing pompous outfits, but the Sumuji also catches her and starts taking measurements of her to make more cute dresses. Afterwards, Karma Guild and Gourmet Guild go to eat something and the idols explain that when they do concerts, a monster always appears and to ensure the well-being of their fans, they fight with those monsters, but they do not plan to abandon their dream of having the entire continent listen to their songs. Then Yuki goes outside to wash his hands and is cornered by Karma's fan club. They are tough guys who threaten him not to touch their idols, but he tells them that he went to look for rainbow silk thread for the outfits of Karmana and that their music is important. That moves the fan club and they accept him with open arms as they listen to the girls sing in the restaurant. At night, Carol goes to her queen's castle again as she and Christina are going to receive new orders and Christina tells her that it is a job that must be done in the shadows. The days go by and Carol distances herself more and more from her guildmates because she feels guilty for being a spy for her queen. And one night, while she's walking through Landosol, she sees Tsunui practicing her singing and dancing. She says that she is only good at making costumes, but her friends are good at singing and dancing. So she is the one who has to practice more to make Karma shine more. The day of the concert finally arrives and Karma shines on stage where fans go crazy singing their songs while Carol and Christina watch from a distance. Then several stray shadows appear in the forest that surrounds the stage and Christina and Carol go to destroy them since those shadows do not collect souls for their queen. When the concert ends, Carol ends up very tired because she destroyed a lot of stray shadows and falls asleep under a bridge. Then she wakes up to the screams of her guildmates, they are looking for her all over Landosol since she never came to dinner. This moves Carol and she decides to tell them that she is a spy, but she doesn't dare and only goes to them in silence. Days later, Kakuro and Yuki go shopping for groceries in Landosol and meet Aoi. She now attends Street Teresa's Academy for Girls, but she is so shy that she hasn't introduced herself to anyone yet. An upperclassman girl invited her to the library, and she is very anxious about going alone, so Yuki and Kakuro go with her. In the library, they find a girl buried under books. She is Yuni, a very smart girl who at her young age is already writing a thesis, but she is also very forgetful and is always taking notes of what she learns during the day. She hypothesizes that there is some kind of deception in this world that causes her to lapse without her memory. This catches Kakuro's attention, but they are interrupted by Yuni's best friends. Shiru, Klo, and Yuni are trying to win a scholarship since the academy is for rich girls and they are not and they summon Aoi to help them with information about the green guardians of the forest. It turns out that there is someone who scares the students who go through the forest to get to the academy in uni, and her friends want to find out about it. So Aoi asks Yuki for the gourmet guild to accompany them to the forest tonight. The eight of them go to the forest and Shiru and Klo get scared at the slightest noise, but Kakuro is more interested in talking to Yuni. She tells her that she lost her original notebook and is worried because she had personal information. Suddenly, they arrive at a cemetery, where the fog is very thick and the girls are afraid of getting lost, but Yuni shows them her talking stone. This stone became conscious after Yuni spoke to it all the time, and it works as a compass. With the stone, they can't get lost. But as they walk, they keep seeing more tombs and realize that they are in a loop, so Yuni asks her talking stone where they are. But the stone goes crazy and starts talking with a strange voice, and it seems that some terrifying figures surround them. Everyone runs away scared, but they lose Aoi, and since it is very dangerous to go alone, Yuni suggests separating into groups to look for her. Kakuro, Carol, Klo, and Chiru go one way, and the others go another. But Chiru disappears instantly, then Klo and Kakuro. 
Carol runs away scared and is knocked out by Awa. It turns out that the Green Guardians or her imaginary friends made wooden dolls as she talked to them for so long, they came to life, and she hides them because she thinks everyone will think she's a weirdo. Then, Awa tries to bury Kakaro, Carol, Chloe, and Chiru, whom she had previously knocked out under the leaves. Awa tries to explain that nothing is as it seems, but suddenly, the forest transforms into another scene, full of ruins, fire, and skeletons. Yuki invokes his golden power to increase Pekarin's strength, but not only that, Yuni also receives that power and starts fighting with the skeletons, but Pekarin stops her because the skeleton who has a crown does not try to fight. Then the skeleton of a former king shows them his memories and Pekarin hugs him saying that she understands and finally his soul rests in peace. The next day, Aoi shows them that she lives in a treehouse in the forest and she accidentally gave life to the trees and Yuni understands her because she did the same with her stone. Later, Yuni tells Kakura that she found her original notebook and it turns out that she herself had thrown it in the trash, but her memory had been erased in her notebook she wrote about the cemetery and the skeleton king, but no matter how much she investigated, she found no trace of that kingdom and concluded that it was in a kingdom of another world, but the deception of this world erased her memory because as she presented that thesis, it was rejected for being too imaginative. Kakura feels bad for her and her scholarship, but Yumi tells her that the true goal of research is to learn, and she will continue searching for the secrets of this world. One night, Yuki dreams about a fight against a white-haired catwoman, who tells him about the Labyrinth Queen, King Leap, and the Seven Crowns, then a fierce battle breaks out and he wakes up without knowing what it means. Days later, the Gourmet Guild are on a dangerous quest on a distant island, where everything goes wrong, the monster corners Kakuro, Carlin, and Pecorine in a cave, while Yuki is kidnapped by a giant bird. Luckily for him, some wolf girls free him from the bird and go to rescue his guildmates, they are Makoto, Maho, Kari, and Kasumi. She works as a detective and Kasumi realizes that the Gourmet Guild are not from the island and Carlin explains how they will get there while Kakuro, Pecorine, and Yuki cook the monster they just defeated. After eating, the wolf girls say that they are the Kaon Guild and they protect the beast folks of Landosol, but several beast folks told them that there were shadows attacking the island and they came to help. Pecorine offers the help of the Gourmet Guild, and the next day the eight meet to find out what is happening on the island. The first thing they do is look at the map where the shadows have been appearing. While they follow the marks on the map, Carol can't stop seeing the ring in her hand, her queen gave it to her and she couldn't be happier because it's the first time she has given her something so beautiful. When they reach the first mark point on the map, they are immediately attacked by hundreds of shadows. Kasumi tries to catch one and lock it in a bottle to analyze it and discover where they come from, but the shadows are very strong. Then, Yuki summons his golden power and increases the energy of all the girls, and thanks to that, all the shadows are defeated. Kasumi laments because she couldn't put even a shadow in the bottle, but when she hears something in the forest, she thinks that there is still a shadow left and she runs to find it. But there is a girl just like her, she only says the name Kiri, and speaks in a strange way. They take her to a safe place and Yuki tries to talk to her, and he gets a reaction the others notice that unlike people possessed by shadows, she is not hostile, she just seems like a lost girl. Then, Kasumi changes Kiri's hairstyle and clothes since she finds it strange to see a girl just like her. The next day, Carol, Pekari, Makoto, and Kaori go to the same place where the shadows appeared and they appear again, so they follow them and see that they are heading to a large canyon, where they are trying to devour Gollum. Meanwhile, Yuki, Kakuro, and Kasumi take care of Kiri, he accidentally activates his golden power and doesn't understand why. At night, everyone talks about what they have just discovered, when a bright butterfly appears and transforms into a girl, she is metamoregnant when she sees Yuki, she asks him to explain them who she is, but he looks at her confused and asks who is she. This saddens metamoregnant because she realizes that he has not yet recovered his memories, she tells them that she is a double, her true body is inside the golem, and that is why the shadows are trying to devour it. She asks them for help to try to protect the golem, but suddenly she gets silent and says that it is too late. The golem has been devoured by the shadows, and now the shadows will begin to attack the inhabitants of the island, so she suggests to evacuate everyone. Then she turns back into a butterfly and leaves. The next day, the eight prepare to face the shadow horde and the golem, since there is no ship large enough to evacuate the islanders. Kasumi tells them that their priority must be to free the golem, since the girl who showed up yesterday said she was Metamorgan, and that name belongs to one of the seven crowns, those seven wise are the ones who created the goddess Minerva, who created to this world, so she must be key to solving this disaster. The eight face the shadows first, then Yuki activates his golden power and the girls increase their power and manage to get inside the body of the golem who is infected with shadows, but they manage to see the body of Metamorgan sealed in a crystal deep at the bottom. 
Pecorine gives everything to free the golem using her sword, her attacks become more and more powerful, and when she is about to hit him for the last time, she disappears. She is teleported to Lamisel Castle, where the Cat Queen smiles evilly at her from the throne. Meanwhile, the shadows go looking for Kiri, and luckily Kasumi and Yuki arrive just in time to rescue her. But when he takes Kiri's hand, a bright light blinds them, and he begins to remember a girl in a field of flowers. But the memory evaporates, and he meets Lady Ameth. She tells him that she can't let him see that memory yet, and asks him to be careful with the shadows, there are bugs occurring in this world, and they are being managed by someone. After that, he wakes up, and they take Kiri away and realize that the horde of shadows are after her, so they plan to use her as bait to get rid of them. On the other hand, in Landosel Castle, the Cat Queen evaluates Pecorine, she wants to know how much her soul has grown and mocks her, because she knows that her greatest fear is being forgotten again. And Pecorine begins to tremble with fear. Back in the forest, Kiri successfully guides the Horde into the sea to sink them and use Kakuro's powers to lock them there. But suddenly, the world begins to glitch and Kiri faints and her body begins to evaporate. And not only that, Yuki is also affected by the glitch and activates his golden power trying to prevent her body from fading. But the golden power begins to get out of control, and he remembers a girl and her kitten in a bed of flowers, and he realizes that he already knew Kiri, and she says goodbye. Yuki's power remains out of control, and Lady MF from another plane tries to control it, but it is impossible, until Labyrinth arrives and cuts off Yuki's power. Lady MF is relieved and calls her Queen Labyrinth. The two talk about the bugs in this world and conclude that Kiri's body cannot be in this world because she is a double of Kasumi. Generally, the shadows that copy another person's body do not have a soul, but when they create a consciousness, they are another living being. Queen Labyrinth feels a little sad because everything is happening again, since Yuki is living a second chance. He and his guidemates had already experienced all this and had lost the battle against the Cat Queen called Mana. But Queen Labyrinth and Lady Emeth gave him the opportunity to go back in time and fix what went wrong the first time, but he returned without memories and they don't know why. But even though everything looks bad, Queen Labyrinth trusts her Princess Knight and believes that he can save the world. Meanwhile, the Cat Queen Mana sends the shadows to swallow Pecorine, but she easily frees herself and tells her that she will never forgive her for stealing her identity and what belongs to her even so. She wants them to eat together to solve what's wrong between them. That makes Mana laugh and tells her that her will is still not completely broken as she wants, so she teleports her back to the battlefield. Pecorine begins to fall from the sky and realizes that her friends are still fighting the Golem, so Yuki invokes his golden power and increases Pecorine's power to the maximum. She puts all her strength into her sword and attacks the Golem with everything she has and finally destroying it. When the rubble settles, everyone worries about Pecorine, but she is fine, just a little hungry. This makes Carol cry, who falls on top of her and receives a warm hug from Pecorine. But, inside the golem, Mana has appeared next to the sealed body of Mena Morrigan. Days later, Yuki sees a pamphlet about a knight committing crimes and his guildmates agree to catch him. While he was out on patrol, a waiter and a waitress from a bar tell him that they are looking for a red-haired girl who is acting strange. She takes a potion created by Dr. Mitsuki. Just hearing that name makes Yuki get chills. They ask him if he sees that girl to stop her so she doesn't follow the wrong path. Then, when he sees a red-haired girl looking at a collection of banned magazines, he burns them because he thinks she is under the influence of Dr. Mitsuki's potion. At night, Pecorine and Carol see a girl being kicked out of a bar. She is Monica, and she says she is looking for her friend Kuka. She is a dancer at the bar, but the waiter tells her that Kuka has already left and asks her to stop Kuka from going down the wrong path. In another part of the city, Yuki and Kakuro encounter the scary knight who scares the people of Landosol, and when he is about to attack them, a sword fighter saves them and leaves. Kakuro sees that the knight left a drop of green slime and realizes that the knight is wearing armor from the royal palace and she is right, since the royal palace squad is also looking for that terrifying knight and the inhabitants of Lambasol can't believe that a knight from the royal palace attacks them. The next day, Tomo and Matsuri, two girls who are part of the royal squad, talk about the possibility that their captain has betrayed the palace and they get sad just thinking about it. But surprisingly, Christina is the one who consoles them and tells them that their captain would never betray her beliefs. Meanwhile, in Landosol, Monica scolds her guildmates, since they must repair the bridge to pay their debts, but Kuka is still under the effects of Katsumi's potion, so it is almost impossible to get them to work. Then one of her guildmates gives her a toy monkey to calm her down. But the toy is strange, since it moves on her own, and is thanks to a green slime. Suddenly, people go crazy and want to buy the strange toy monkey, and Monica gets an idea. Find more of that green slime to give life to the toys and sell them for a high price and finally pay off their debts, they don't just find droplets of slime, they find tons of it hidden underground. Meanwhile, in the city, 
Kakuro runs into the sword fighter who saved them yesterday and she says that she is trying to protect the people from Land of Soul, and Pekarin tells her that she is too. Suddenly, a fight starts between the scary knight and the royal palace squad, then the sword fighter no longer hides her identity and reveals that she is the captain of the royal palace squad and someone is wearing her armor. Tomo and Matsuri are relieved to see their true captain, and the three begin to fight the knight. But when they break the armor, there is nobody inside, there is green slime. And to make everything worse, the slime that Monica and her friends found flooded the city, engulfing several inhabitants of Landosol. Then, the other inhabitants joined together to get the others out of the green slime, even the waiter and a waitress one helped Kuka. Finally, Pekarine and the royal palace guard destroy the giant knight. Luckily, everything goes well and the knight and the slime are eliminated. The part of the city is destroyed and Monica feels guilty. But Pekarine gives her a cup of tea, and she tells her not to worry. One night, one of the singers from the Carmina group named Chica runs away from something, but as she runs, she forgets Carmina. The next day, the Gourmet Guild finishes their work harvesting wheat and is ready to eat something delicious, when they hear screams and save two little girls from a swarm of bees. They are Ayane, with her ventriloquist bear and Kurumi, they were looking for honey for Sarah and they live in the Serendia orphanage, and since she works very hard, the little girls wanted to make lemonade with honey for her, but the bees protect their honey. So the Gourmet Guild invites them to eat with them, but when they arrive at Landersol, they run into Chica, who is walking aimlessly and looking like a mess. She tells them that she doesn't know who she is and she is scared because her memories are disappearing and she faints. They take her to the restaurant where Pecorine works and suddenly, Nozomi, the other member of Carmina, comes running very worried about Chika. Meanwhile, the two little girls start eating and Ayan has an argument with her bear Pukichi. But something is not right, Kurumi's vision blurs and she starts to behave aggressively and not only that, Chika wakes up and behaves like an animal and eats what she finds. When everyone calms down, Chika continues behaving like an animal, and Ayan asks her if she is Pukichi, her bear, and Chika answers in a masculine voice that she is Pukichi. But that doesn't last long, Chika returns to normal and says that both she and Kurumi suffered from memory manipulation, and the culprit is Foggy, the spirit of memories. Chika says that Foggy is having fun erasing and changing the people's memories and tells Yuki be careful. Then Saren arrives at the restaurant and Kurumi continues acting like a jilted wife, while the cook acts like a baby and Kakaro explains what is happening. While Pecorine and Carol go to where Foggy's body is sealed, they go a long way and their bond grows since being together, Pecorine feels like they are sisters. And then finally, they reach the pond where Fugi is sealed. On the other hand, the restaurant is now run by Surin since the others continue to behave like babies. Suddenly, Carol and Pecorine arrive and Carol takes out Ian's bear and casts a spell on it, making Foggy come out of the bear. Foggy splits into four spirits, and they attack Pecorine, but Yuki gets in the way and receives the attacks, but the attacks make him remember three girls and a fairy they were his friends and he does not remember them. When he wakes up, he realizes that he is crying, but he recovers and activates his golden power, and the girls increase their powers, but this time it is Chika and Nozomi who defeat the evil spirit and seal Foggy again. Kakuro says that she is glad that everything is back to normal, but Yuki can't shake the sadness in his heart. Days later, Kakuro writes a lot of letters and goes to leave them at the post office, but some thieves break into the place and take the mailbox sack with her letters inside. Two girls named Misaki and Suzume, who had put their recommendation letters in the mailbox, want to get them back and Kakuro pose with them since she put fairies in the robber's loot and they can trace them. Kakuro asks them what letters they sent, and the girls say that they are looking for a new school, because theirs is about to close due to their bad grades. Finally, they arrive at the thieves' den and Misaki plans to distract them with a simple dance, but the thieves think she is a kid who has lost her mind, and they tie her up and lock her up with the loot. Meanwhile, in Landosol, Yuki can't stop being sad, and he tells Labarista that he remembered his old companions, whom he couldn't protect. Labarista tells him that he is alive, and that must mean something good and he says that this time he will protect his new companions. Elsewhere, Pecorine continues working on the rice harvest and falls asleep and has a nightmare with herself. Princess Yusiana, she cries because if she tells the truth to Carol and Yuki, they will not forgive her. When Pecorine wakes up, she realizes that she was crying. Returning to Kakuro and Suzume, they devise a plan and manage to rescue Misaki and their letters, but are discovered by the thieves, who begin to chase them. Luckily, the royal guard arrives to save him along with Suzuna and Misaki's teacher. In the afternoon, Kakuro puts her letters in the mailbox again, but Suzuna and Misaki tear up theirs and say that they will study harder to improve their grades and save their school. The next day, Yuki, Carol, and Pecorine continue working on the rice harvest, and suddenly, Kakuro arrives with a lot of people, she hands them letters telling them about the big rice harvest, and everyone came to help. 
After long days of work, the rice harvest has finished and everyone cooks rice together and has a great friendly lunch while Pecorine eats her rice ball, she begins to cry and tells Kakaro that since she lost everything, she never believed that she would taste the flavor of happiness again, but now she feels it again that makes Kakaro tear up and she agrees with her. So Pecorine decides to tell Carol and Yuki the truth. The next day, Pecorine wants to tell Carol the truth, but in the last minute, she regrets it. Carol is very happy that morning and cooks rice balls, puts them in a lunchbox and leaves. She goes to the royal palace and enters Mana's room seeing that her queen has a restless sleep, she stays to sleep with her holding her hand. When Mana wakes up, Carol apologizes for her audacity and shows her the rice balls she made for her. Mana at first does not accept them, but remembers that Pecorine once invited her to eat with her and agrees to sit down to eat with Carol. All this is observed by another Mana with an evil gaze. Meanwhile, the captain of the royal guard patrols the royal palace and reaches an unknown part of the palace and remembers what Christina once told her. It makes no sense that in a kingdom of humans, whoever rules is a beast, and she concludes that there is something wrong with her memory. Suddenly, she reaches a passage and is teleported to another place where Metamoregnant's body is sealed, and not only that, Mana also appears with many shadows and attacks the captain. Meanwhile, Carol returns home and runs into her guild mates. They tell her that there is a festival in Landosol and drag her away. At the festival, there are many food stalls, and there are also Yuki's sisters, who offer him new flavors of creeps, and Labarista takes him somewhere else to talk alone. She asks Yuki how is he physically, and he tells her that he is fine, but she suspects that something is wrong, that that doesn't matter to him, and he says that this time he will protect his companions. Then, Labarista decides to talk to Mana and goes to the castle, while Yuki goes with his girls to play at the gaming stands. Kakuro leaves Carol and Pecorine alone so they can talk, but Pecorine don't dare tell them the truth. Meanwhile, in the royal castle, Labarista transports Mana to another place and they begin a tough battle. Mana tells her that she wants her power, the power to transform anything into what she wants, and shows her that she now possesses the metamorignant body. Suddenly, Mana summons thousands of swords that attack Labarista, but she creates a protective shield and is barely saved, but now it is her turn to attack and the demonstration of both of their powers is chilling. Mana scoffs saying that no matter how many seven crowns join together, they can never beat her. But Labarista says that she is the one in trouble, because she only has the power of Metamoregnant now, that means that Mana can't use her Hobito Tensai power anymore because she has been through the re-dive too many times, as has Yuki. Then Mana tries to attack her again, but she has run out of energy after a tremendous battle, and she can't absorb any more shadows, because Shizuru and Reno are keeping them at bay outside the sphere they are in. Labarista says that she realized her weakness in another timeline where Mana trapped them all together and eliminated them. After that timeline, Mana can no longer use Hadu Tensai because she used it so many times to predict the future, and now Mana absorbs shadows as a source of power. Mana gets desperate and wants to flee, but Labarista has checkmated her and is about to eliminate her with her sword. But suddenly, Carol is summoned by her ring and stands between Mana and Labarista, so Labarista is distracted and is from behind by another malicious Mana. As Labarista lies dying, she apologizes for everything she has put Yuki through and wishes that his friends remain the way they were back then. The next day, hell breaks loose not only in Landosol, but in all villages and islands, Mana gives the power of Labarista to Carol, and she is surrendered to her will and does everything Mana asks of her. She begins to those who have special souls and traps the rest in spheres, casting hundreds of shadows at people. The Gormit Guild doesn't understand what's happening, everyone is shocked by what Carol is doing. Meanwhile, the detective Kasumi steals a book from the royal castle and takes it to Yuni, which is quite difficult because everyone is running away from the shadows that surround them. Yuni and Kasumi theorize that it was not normal for a beast to sit on the throne since the king and queen are humans, so Yuni concludes that someone has erased the memories of everyone in Landosol. The book that Kasumi stole talks about royal tiaras passed down from generation to generation among the princesses, and the current princess Yushiana does not have it but they know someone who does have a royal terror similar to the one in the book. Meanwhile, Pecorine, Yuki, and Kakuro defend as best they can all the inhabitants of Lambosol from the shadows that attack them, and then they run to the royal palace to ask for shelter, but Mana orders Carol to eliminate them. Carol obeys Mana and launches an attack to with the inhabitants of Lambosol, but Pecorine steps in and saves them. The two girls begin to fight, but Pecorine tries not to hurt Carol. However, Carol does not hold back and sends her flying away from a single attack. On the other hand, Yuki and Kakuro try to help people, but suddenly, Yuki feels a big pain and faints, so Yasuko and her two sons help them. 
Returning to the girls' battle, Pecorine does not give up and goes to Carol and tells her that she was really happy when she was with the Gourmet Guild and hugs her crying, but Carol electrocutes her. Suddenly, the stones of all of Landosol begin to speak. Uni has given them consciousness and speaks to all the inhabitants of Landosol. She tells them that the current princess, Yustiana, is fake. That angers Mena, and she orders Carol to execute all the inhabitants of Landosol, and she obeys her. But upon hearing the people's screams of pain, she stops and tells Mana that she can't do it. Then Mana begins to control her body as a puppeteer and Carol begins to cry in despair because she is attacking people against her will and begs for someone to help her. Pecorine stands up and says that she will save her, and Uni makes the Stones project the fight for all the inhabitants of Landosol, and everyone hears Pecorine recognizing that she is the real Princess Eustiana von Astria, and she's going to take back the kingdom. The Landosol people start cheering for her because they know that she is their real princess. Then Mana summons the captain of the Royal Guard, she was also being controlled by her, and tells Pecorine that Captain Jun will be her opponent. Meanwhile, Madame Regnant asks the Twilight Guild for help in freeing her body and takes them to the castle. But they are surprised to see Christina guarding all the bodies with powerful souls, and not only they are there, she also have the bodies of Madame Regnant and Labyrinth sealed, so the three girls start fighting Christina. In Landosol, Yasuko and her family, Kakuro and Yuki, who is still unconscious, are surrounded by hordes of shadows, so they try to escape over a bridge, but is knocked down. When Kakuro awakens, she is in Lady Ameth's dimension, she gives her the key to control Yuki's power, and warns her that if he loses control of his power, it could be catastrophic for him, so she asks him to be his support. Kakuro wakes up and sees that Yuki has woken up and is carrying his friend in his back to get him out of the bottom of the river, but the shadows chase them luckily. The little ones of Little Lyrical summon their big birdie, and it saves Yuki. Jun and Pecorine continue fighting and Pecorine is the one who is having the worst time. Seeing that she is very hurt, Carol asks her to run away, but she does not listen to her and continues fighting. Then Mana uses Carol's power and summons chains that rise to the sky and lock into the Salt Tower. Meanwhile, the Twilight Guild girls fights with everything they have against Christina, but she is really powerful, so Mena Moregnant brings two more girls to help them, since Christina is part of the Seven Crowns and her specialty is defense. But Christina shows them that her power has evolved, she is not only good in defense but also in offense. Suddenly, Christina falls silent and realizes that it was all a plan to mislead her, while she was attacking the others, Rico sneaked behind her, and when she was about to free the sealed body of Metamoregnant, someone else appeared. Meanwhile, Jun and Pecorine continue fighting fiercely, until Pecorine decides to use the power of her royal tyra and launches a very strong attack on Jun. Pecorine tells her that she is very strong, worthy of being the captain of the royal guard, and tells her remember that they have to protect the people of Landosol, that wakes Jun up and regains her freedom again. Mana gets angry and is ready to get rid of Pecorine, but Jun gets up and protects her from her attack. Now the two fight together against Mana, and are a spectacular team that manages to defeat her. But when they thought everything was over, they realized that Mana was just a shadow. Suddenly, the real Mana appears, and when she is about to absorb Carol and Pecorine's soul, Yuki appears and invokes his golden power, and Mana says that like all the past times, is Yuki, who comes to try to defeat her in the final battle. Thanks to Yuki's golden power, Pecorine regains her energy and tells Mana that she will take back what she took from her, and Yuki asks Kakuro to increase his golden power to raise Pecorine's power to a higher level, and she used the key that Lady Ameth gave her. Then the two begin to fight against Mana, and Landosol's people cheer for their princess. Mana mocks them, but Pecorine says that their cheering gives her strength to continue fighting. Mana says that in all timelines the same thing always happens, so this time she must end it quickly, and she summons Metamoregnant and Labyrinth to fight alongside her. And when they launch their attacks, Carol stands in front and protects them with her magic which annoys Mana, who says that in all the timelines, Carol always betrays her at the last moment. So Mana proceeds to do the same thing as always, she chains Pecorine and begins to electrocute her, the world begins to split, and Mana summons Minerva asking her to give her the world. Then Yuki follows the plan that Lady Emeth gave to Kakuro. He is the Princess Knight of Labyrinth, so he has to get as close as he can to Mana and free Cabarrus's body, and he'd do it. Immediately, Labyrinth wakes up and frees Metamoregnant. The two of them fiercely attack Mana, and she frees Pecorine from her electric. Labyrinth tells Mana that she has reached her limit and asks her to give up. Mana accepts that her power has not grown at all, so she allows herself to be swallowed by Shadow Mana and becomes a gigantic shadow. Carol starts crying because her queen is lost forever, but Pecorine says that she hasn't eaten with Mana yet, so they have to save her. Suddenly, all the guild arrive at the battle and begin to attack the giant shadow, and not only them, Kristina also arrives, who was convinced by the royal guard, since after all, she is their vice-captain. 
They all fight together and Yuki summons his golden power once again and the Gourmet Guild enters the gigantic shadow and fights to reach the core where mana is. Carol manages to enter but Yuki receives a fatal wound in the chest and his golden power disappears. Mana is surprised that Carol has come to look for her and Carol says that she is her princess knight after all, but Mana has lost the will to live and is ready to leave this world, but Carol does not give up and tries to convince her to take her hand, or she will perish with her right there. Meanwhile, all seems lost for Yuki, Labarista is ready to restart the timeline once again. But this time he asks them to give him a little more time, he will protect this timeline. Then Yuki wakes up, and with the little energy he has left to live, E, Kakuro, and Pekarin enter the core where Carol and Mana are and convinces them to save themselves. In the end, all the inhabitants of Landosol start to cry because they think everything ended badly, when the gigantic shadow turns into stone and begins to collapse, but at the last minute they come out. Immediately everyone begins to celebrate the Gourmet Guild's victory, the Royal Guard handcuffs Mana and Labarista tells her that this time, only took two different decisions to change everything, hers and Yuki's. Suddenly, the king and queen are freed with their memories restored and Pecorine sees them and runs to hug them and bursts into tears. After that, peace reigns in Lando Sol, Pecorine becomes Princess Eustiana again, so she leaves the Gumit Guild house and lives in the castle. The days go by and now it is Carol who cooks and she doesn't do it very well, but Kakuro and Yuki know that she worked hard, so they are ready to eat it, but suddenly, the door opens and Princess Eustiana enters. She tells them that she is not ready to be ruler yet and asks them to accept her into the Gourmet Guild again as Pecorine. Carol gets tearful and says that the first quest of the Reborn Gourmet Guild is to eat the breakfast she prepared, and they accept it smiling. 